Good morning, Tuesday. I, got, I like Tuesdays. It's a good day. Nothing wrong with a Tuesday. Have a drink of coffee first here, folks. Rob here. I'm going to change things up a bit today. A little bit more refreshing in the sense of knowing what our bodies will be like when we are raised. When the trumpet sounds, which is Christ himself, then, we, then the dead in Christ will rise. And then we, the living, will be snatched together away with them in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay, so I'm gonna, it's, I've been studying out of this uh, Check Your Panoply, and it's a little bit uh, meaty, as it were, in the sense of, well, you'd have to be pretty much uh, a student of the scriptures to understand a lot of what I was saying in the Check Your Panoply. But it has to do with the members of the body of Christ and our walk. And the next chapter there was doctrine and deportment. So I just want to leave that for maybe a couple of days and give you some uh, other refreshing uh, writing. And this is from Studies in 1 Corinthians 15. It's called The Resurrection Change. Look, a secret to you I am telling. We all indeed shall not be put to repose. Yes, yet we all shall be changed. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, for, uh, verse 51. This is the secret of the resurrection. It reveals the one feature which will distinguish our vivification from that of the circumcision. It declares that our bodies will not be raised soilish, but celestial, not with blood, but vivified directly by spirit. The soil and the air are mediums through which the power which comes from the sun is supplied to our bodies. In our new bodies, these will not be needed. Life will flow to us directly from the, its divine source and abundantly unhampered by the means of supply. The change will come <coughs> in an instant. Excuse me. <coughs> Jeez. Sorry about that. Have another drink of coffee. That'll fix that. The change will come in an instant, in, a twinkle, in the twinkle of an eye. At the last trump, for he will be trumpeting, and the dead will be roused incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Here we have the same prior expectancy. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, which was revealed first to the Thessalonians. Here are the two classes, the survivors and the reposing. And the Lord himself descends with the trumpet of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. In Thessalonians, all is colored by the consolation which the apostle wished to impart. Here it is concerned with the change, which the secret reveals. There we, will, we find that the dead will be roused first, so that they, they and the living will be snatched away together in clouds. Here we learn that it will all be the work of an instant. In the time it takes an eyelid to raise and lower, not even during this the short period in which the trumpet will be blown, but at the last blast. So think about when you blink. That's just an example. I believe it's even faster than that. I think it's at the speed of thought that we will go. When he calls us to the air, it'll be just so quick. Have, have you ever noticed the $6 million man? That show, when he was doing the slow motion run, but it was actually so fast that it was so slow. And that's exactly how I believe we will be snatched away. That's swift. For he will be trumpeting, and the dead will be roused incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Again we notice the order. For it agrees with the previous words that the dead in Christ shall be rising first. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Paul conforms fully to every way to his former revelation. He simply enlarges upon the side of it which deals with our bodies. Here he uses the remarkable phrase which is equivalent of vivification. The words roused, incorruptible, assure us that of unending life. Two things are predicted of the body, sensation and incorruptibility. They are aptly chosen, chosen for they assure us that the changed body, though bloodless, will have a soul. And though once corrupted, will never return to decay again. Incorruptibility is especially used of the dead, for the opposite has been their lot. This corruptible must put on incorruption. The, this mortal must put on immortality. This is a word for the living, 
The process of dying must be replaced by deathlessness. It would be much to be assured that we should never die. But this is an infinitely more. Mortality is not merely the possibility of death, but the actual process, which loads our, our whole lives with sickness and with sin. Who would care to live endlessly in dire de 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 decrepitude? We, we, what we need is deliverance from the enduring, uh, enduring of death in our experience. Experience. Not merely freedom from de dread of death in the future, as this is our expectation, death may indeed relieve us of our daily distress and put us to repose. Yet we, we do not wish oblivion but life. We want our bodies changed from mortality to immortality, from so soulish to and soilish to spiritual and celestial. Such is our constant longing and ardent expectation. So that is our expectation to be changed, to be changed from immortal to more, changed from mortal to immortality. Death swallowed up by victory. Now, whenever this corruptible should be putting on incorruption, and this mortal should be putting on immortality, then shall come to pass the word which is written: "Swallowed up was death by victory." Where is your victory, death? Where is your sting, death? Although this statement has immediate application to our change, it is well to note the precise wording for it has a much wider scope. It reads not when, but whenever. <clears throat> Every time there is vivification will, will this note of victory ascend, and it is not fulfilled but come to pass, for the fulfillment occurs only at the consummation, when death finally and fully ceases to operate. Many false conclusions has been hastily, have been hastily deduced by not observing the precise introductory words in each reference to the previous revelation. This statement includes more than our vivification in, in its embrace. It concludes that the whole subject uh, and stretches forward to the consummation, when death will be abolished. Death is presented here in, the, in its two aspects as operating in us and stinging us. And uh, we, when we expire as having the victory over us, both aspects are dealt with in vivification. We will no longer be dying and we will never die. There will be no present pain nor future victory. No one needs to ask where death sting is today, for each one of us has its, it festering in his own flesh. No one needs to inquire for death's victory, for the earth has become the carnal house full of dead man's bones. And you can see that in all the cemeteries of the earth. Everyone that is dead is dead. They're not raised yet. No one is in heaven. Your Aunt Martha is not in heaven watching, looking over you. Or your, or your Uncle uh, Fred is not over there saying, oh, look at you from heaven. No, he's in the ground. Until he is raised, he's going to be in the state of death. Death sting. Now, the sting of death is sin. This is a difficult statement to understand before we grasp the fact that sin is due to death operating in us. The rendering of the authorized version in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, for that all have sinned instead of on which all sin, completely reverses the true uh, relationship. The state of dying would be unutterably more bearable of it did not make us sinners, if it did not make us sinners. It is not that dying that it's not the dying that hurts, but sin, which is the sting. If sin were absent, even death would lose its painfulness and much of its uh, dishonor. This is also the solution to of the question: How shall we be made sinless in the resurrection? Nothing is said of this in the scriptures, because it is self-evident that if sin is due to dying, it will be unknown where there is abundant life. Vivification is the sovereign cure for sin. So it was with our Savior. Sin he could not, he could not, for in him was, not, was, was life. Okay, so Christ himself was sinless when he walked this earth. He's the only one that was ever a, a human being and sinless. At the very end, in a loud voice, he committed his spirit to God. In him was no sin, because the life he had direct 
from God swallowed up the in inheritance of mortality and death, which he had from Adam through to his through his mother. The law, the power of sin. Now the power of sin is the law. First Corinthians fifteen fifty six. If the law ha could have given life, it would have enabled those who receive it to fulfill it. In Romans seven, the apostle lays down the pr principle that apart from law, sin is dead. He lived apart from law once, but the precept revived sin. The law ostensibly given for the preservation of life becomes became his death. There is no vivification through the law. It abets sin and spreads death. Over both of these, both sin and law, the companions of death, we have a present victory in spirit, and as set forth in Paul's Roman letter. This is a blessed foretaste of of our great and glorious victory over death itself when our change comes. The world celebrates its great victories of arms after they occur, occur. and pre-force pre and perforce it must. But it is far better to enjoy them beforehand in the times of defeat and death for then the tidings of success are most needed and appreciated. It is our privilege to celebrate the most illustrious of all victories over the greatest and latest of all our enemies, long before it actually occurs. Settled and unmovable. So that, my b beloved brethren, be settled, unmovable, superabounding in the work of the Lord, always being aware that your toil is not for naught in the Lord. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. The present conquests of death through sin and the law may, be, may make us uneasy, restless, agitated, spasmatic, desultory and wavering in our work for the Lord, unless we are embedded to look forward to the coming victory. With this is in view, we need not worry about the outcome. That, that, this is, that is certain, sure, and glorious. Contrary to all appearances, our toil is not in vain. All our longings are, and aspirations will be fulfilled. If God has taken us the heart of the, an evangelist who would like to see every single soul saved, our longing will yet be satisfied. If we desire to perfect the saints in the knowledge of God, this will be accomplished. In the certainty of the final victory, let us be steady, undeviated, and full of zeal for God. God is able. In conclusion, we need to be concerned about the resurrection. We need not be concerned about the resurrection, how it will be brought about, and what will it will accomplish, as though it were the work of a man, or as if God had exhausted his resources. We cannot even understand his wonders in nature. God is able to fulfill all pleasure of his will, and he will give each one that, w that which pleases him. He who raised our Savior from the deepest depth of degradation and death up to the highest pinnacle of immortality and glory in order that he may administer the celestial realms and prepare them for the consummation when God will be reconciled to all. He loves us and will give us immortality and glory celestial so that we may share in the mighty task of revealing his grace and love to the whole creation so that every creature in the realm celestial may find him in their all. Okay, that was, read, that was written by A. Enoch. Okay, that's wonderful. So we know what our bodies are going to be like. They will be immortal. They will be energized by God's Spirit. They will not need blood, and they will traverse the universe and the celestial realms with a message of peace. We're ambassadors of God. We're not of ourselves. We are of God, and we will be taken there in the air to meet our Lord. And thank God for that. The dead will be raised first, and then we, the living, will be snatched away and changed and meet the Lord in the air. And that is our glorious expectation, folks. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and we will see you tomorrow, Wednesday. Happy Tuesday.